Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. Genesis chapter 16, verse 1. It says, Now Sarah, uh, Abram's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maid whose name was Hagar. So again, when we talk about maid, it's a bond servant, it's a slave uh, is what they're talking about, um, and and we went into that a little bit, and and so when we get to the verse where she takes off, it's actually, I mean, that, that's a whole other thing, uh, because she was a maid servant and a, a bond servant. So, uh, so Sarai uh, said to Abram, "Now behold, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I will obtain uh, children through her." Right, and then Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. And so when we look at this, I think it's very important that we understand that the first thing that I, I don't get how she believes that she knows that she's not going to have any more children. Uh, she's not a doctor, and she shouldn't be playing one, right? Uh, one of the things that we see is that we see that um, Sarai's solution is the same thing that Abram does. It's a solution to... I'm going to try to figure out what God's will is for my life. I can't wait on God. I'm going to make it happen in my own time. And that's how a lot of us do. We get, we get frustrated. We don't have the patience to wait. And we, we try to make things happen. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarah. And, and so not a good picture for Abram, right? He shouldn't have listened. He knew what God had told him, and and we went into that when we went through this. And I think I beat on the men a little bit (laughs) during that teaching because the reality of it is is he was told specifically by the Lord what was going to happen. And it comes back to when we have something that has been given to us by the will of God, we need to follow it because it's God's word, right? And, And that's important. Like Abram knew and should have said, I don't think this is the answer. Lead your home. You know, this is what, what, what Abram is supposed to be doing. But yet he doesn't. And he says, And after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, and Abram's wife, uh, wife Sarai took Hagar, the Egyptian, her maid, and gave her husband to Abram as his wife. So we talked about the promised land, and uh, they, are, they are in the promised land, and, and we know that, that Abram was getting older, uh, in Genesis chapter 15, verses 4 through 6, he was given the command. Then behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, This man will not be your heir, but one who will come forth from your own body. He shall be your own heir. So again, what Abram was trying to do is he was trying to take one of his workers. Like my, my number two, make him the heir. So again, what is Abram doing? Abram's trying to figure out God's will on his own as well. And, and the, the key to that verse is the word of the Lord came to him. He knew what the word of the Lord is, but he didn't follow it. He didn't follow it. And he says, he shall be your heir. And he took him outside and said, now look towards the heavens and count the stars if you are able to count them. You can't. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. Then he believed in the Lord and he reckoned it to him is righteousness. And then that's when Abram goes into that deep sleep and there's a covenant ma- that's made between Abram and, and, uh, and the Lord. And, and it's not a covenant that is dependent on Abram. It is a covenant that God's going to keep. 
It's, it's, it's God who's making the promise. In Genesis 15, 18, it says, On that day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt as far as the great river, the river of Euphrates. So Abram was, was thinking in his own thought that he could fulfill the promise by having his servant be the heir. And then what does his wife do? The same thing. She's like, take Hagar. We're going we're, we're gonna to go ahead and get our kids uh, through Hagar. And so the question that I had when I, when I wrote this down is like, why do we struggle with understanding and waiting on the will of God? When you're wanting something done or you're praying about it and you're like, man, I've been praying for six months, right? My, I got to make this happen. And you just jump in. But it wasn't God's timing yet. You just make it and you make a bigger mess, right? In Psalm 40, verses 1 through 4, it says, I will wait pa patiently for the Lord. And he inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me up out of the pit of destruction, out of the miry, uh, miry clay, and he set my feet upon the rock, making my footsteps firm. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and will trust in the Lord. How blessed is the man who has made the Lord his trust and has not turned to the proud nor to those who lapse in falsehood. So for us, one of the things we have to do is we have to begin to trust the Lord, to trust, to understand his will. And one of the first ways that we do that is by when we walk in the way that we walk with God. I told y'all uh, today, uh, one of the things that, that I was looking at, and it was talking about people that struggle with weak prayer. Their prayer lives are weak. And what it is, is actually, it's not that, that their prayer life is weak. There's something else in their walk that's suffering. Whether it's their time in the Word, whether it's spending time actually looking to apply the Word, whether it's fellowship, you know, it's it, yeah, how many people will stay home on a Wednesday night, right? Because it's like, hey, man, it's uh, it's midweek. I'm tired. I get it, man. I was there, too, at times. I remember when we first started coming to church on Wednesday night. I was like, Wednesday night? Why are we going to do church on Wednesday night, man? I told you I'd be real with you. I'm always that way. But it's like at the end of the day, I, I can remember telling Teresa, why are we going on a Wednesday? That's what Sunday's for. I was in my first year of my walk with God, and I was like, but I, there wasn't really any growth. I, I was, I was, I hadn't started serving yet. We were dealing with all of our marital stuff that God, you know, in 22 years of a broken marriage, and now you're trying to follow Jesus. It took time to fix all that through biblical counseling. We, we did that for a while, and and um, and we started trusting and 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 you know, reading the Word of God, and then we started to realize we're not, our relationship wasn't developing. So part of learn, knowing the will of God is you have to be walking with God. You, you have to actually spend time in the Word and time in prayer and take those opportunities to get involved. I, I, I've told y'all, and I, and I mean this sincerely, and, and it comes down like Reuben teaches baseball, Right? So uh, do we consider that something in the church? I do. Because he's reaching more people than I could ever reach as a pastor. Serving and, and, and your walks with God begin in your home. That's what we, we mess up on. Like it starts with your marriage. Starts with your kids. And then it comes into the church and goes out into the community. Serving is is part of our walks, and and so when when we take those opportunities that we have, but we need to not neglect the things that God has called us to do, and that goes back to discipleship. You know, do you have a Timothy in your life? Like for us older guys, it's like we should be sewing into somebody. It's, it's, it's a, it, and, and one of the other things, too, is like when you get those young guys that are on fire for God, that are, you know how they are, 18, 19, 20, they're like, and you're like, slow down, dude. <laughs> don't, 
get the bucket of water and try to quench the fire of the Holy Spirit and throw it on them. You got to give them a little bit of, it's just like your kids, right? You got to, you trust them a little bit more until they do something. I mean, that's too much. But it's the same thing. Un understanding the will of God is like having that Timothy that's next to you. Having somebody who's sowing into you. That's what discipleship is. And we talked about that when, when you know, we looked at that Barner survey this past weekend. Only 5% of the church are being discipled. 56% of the church think that their spiritual life is private. How is that functioning? It doesn't function that way. Because you're keeping everything in. You're not talking to nobody. You're not, you just come in. You do service. You leave. That's not what church is. When you read the, the, the New Testament. And you learn about the early church. They did life together. They did Acts 2.4.2. The word of God. Prayer. Breaking of bread. And koinia. Which was fellowship. And koinia is actually admonishing each other. With the word of God. Giving godly wisdom to somebody. And, and by doing that, your walk with God and your understanding of the will of God will be easier for you to grasp. This is what Abram and Sarah missed. They were too busy trying to figure out how to fix the problem, and it wasn't their problem to fix. It was God's. God made the promise. God was going to fulfill the promise. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and six, my favorite verse in the Bible. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. This was the first verse in the Bible I could understand. I, I didn't have any theology background. I, didn't, I was coming into this brand new and I, I was like, well, I think I can do that because I know that my understanding got me to this point. <laughs> Because I never trusted God. Broken marriage, broken family. You know, um, I think my son uh, was looking at the video that he did, and I forgot. You know, we went through two two ODs. This is before Christ. We didn't know God, and our kids were falling off at the wayside. Struggling with heavy anxiety, depression, and it was just like, because their parents, the house was not a calm home. It was chaos. And so, like, for understanding the will of God, stop leaning on your own understanding and start trusting the Lord. If Abram would have trusted the Lord, he would have remembered that the word of the Lord was what? I'm going to, you're going to have descendants. You, you got to trust that. The other thing is, is we need to start with internalizing God's word. We need to actually, one of the things I love about this school is they actually have memorization of the word of God. They're, they can, they, they have to, even down to the first and first grade kids, they have to, have to do memorization verses. How many of you could actually throw off a verse today? Right? It's, it's the reality of it is like we need to have those things stored on our hearts. To understand the will of God is simply Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. It says, therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will is of God is I would challenge you that that which is good and acceptable and perfect I would challenge you tonight to go and just pull the verses that have the will of God in it throughout the Bible and and you'll be able to understand because people that's the number one thing in church I don't understand what the will of God is it's throughout the scripture he tells you what the will of God is he tells you what? Not to be what? Drunk. But to be filled with the Spirit. That's part of the will of God. It's in that verse in Ephesians. 
But it tells you that in Ephesians 5, verses 17 through 21, people don't miss that in that verse. It says, then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. They miss that part. That little part that says what the will of the Lord is. And what is the will of the word? Lord? And do not get drunk with wine, for that is dispensation, but be what? Filled with the Spirit. And then what is that, that will continue? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs and singing and making melody with all your heart to the Lord. You're worshiping God. And it's not, it's not just music. Worship is not something we just do on Sunday. Worship is you opening the Word of God and spending time in God's Word. Worship is what we're doing right now. But he says, always giving thanks for all the things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. That's part of the will of God. We all have authority that we submit to. That's part of the will of God. Do you submit to it? Right? We struggle with it. We struggle with it in our cars. So we got a speed limit, right? Do we want to practice it? We struggle keeping the speed limit at 55. But understanding, internalizing the Word of God, so that way it's stored up on your heart, and as you're walking with God and your relationship is strengthened, you know, hey, this is what I'm supposed to do. I ain't supposed to do that. You don't need nobody to tell you. It's already here. God's word said that that's wrong. And 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 that's that's part of it. What we need to do also is to to obey what we already know. Simple. Obey what you know already. You have people or you're discipling somebody who's young in Christ and you go, "Well, they say, I don't man, I haven't even read all the Bible. Obey what you know right now. Stick with what you know. Walk in that so if it tells you in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3, for this is the will of God, your sanctification, that is, that you abstain from sexual morality. That's part of the will of God. So we have to obey those things. It's simply taking what we already know and putting them into practice. My, one of the, 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 probably the easiest things that m my pastor that I, Pastor Joe taught me is when you're in the Word of God, because sometimes we'll do the one-year Bible, right? And it, it covers a lot. So you're doing something out, of gen or something out of the Old Testament, something out of the New Testament, then you're also doing Psalms and Proverbs. Well, how do you obey all of that? Go the Holy Spirit will speak to you. You'll know, like, this is important. I need to, what, you, you get that interest, like, what does it mean here? Why is it there? What is that word dispensation? I want to look that up. What does it mean in the Greek? Right? Whatever that is, apply that one truth to your life every day and start walking in it. If it says to love your neighbor, like today I got to practice that. I had somebody, I was coming into school this morning and I'm kind of, I don't know what road that is, but I'm coming down the main road and somebody jumped out at the last moment and I had to slam the brakes on. And I was just like, are you kidding me, dude? Now, normally before Christ, there would have been some horn and some fingers and some other stuff. But I was like, don't do it. Just, just back off. And then what was the Lord? Just his humor. Somebody did it to him. <laughs> not even a few, like a mile earlier. Somebody jumped in front of him and he had to slam on his brakes and I was just like, ah, oh, Lord. But it happens and then he gets upset. I could see him in the thing going, uh, and it's like, that's, that's our, we incline. So if we are like, just take what you know already. Love my neighbor as myself. Love my wife as Christ loves the church, right? So that those are simple things that we, we know already. The other thing that we do is we seek God, uh, godly input. This is important. What I mean by that is you need to have somebody in your life that will give you godly counsel. Okay? 
if you know their walk is not straight, don't ask them for counsel. Like if you know, hey man, I I don't know, man. It's you know they they've been they were at the bar two weeks ago. It was on Instagram. That's probably not the person you want to get godly counsel from. You need somebody that can give you some wisdom. Proverbs chapter eleven verse fourteen says, "Where there is no guidance, the people fall. But in the abundance of counselors, there is victory." I I think that verse kind of covers the White House right now. There's no guidance. If you have godly counselors, it's, man, we need those. The, uh, I love that, but in the abundance, like it's saying, like more, have more than just one. You need to have somebody on speed dial. Hey, man, I, I know that guy's going to pick up the phone, even if it's 2 in the morning. Or he's going to call me first thing in the morning. I need prayers. This is going on, whatever. You know, you need to have those people in your life. Uh, those things are important. And, and you know, the, the other thing is, too, is to, to know the will of God is to, God knows exactly how he's wired you. And, and so one of the things that we, we understand is that in, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10, it says, As to the salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made careful search and inquiries. And so what we do is we are seeking God's will for our life through prayer, uh, through the word. Uh, and, and we're going to get into that this weekend as we talk about prayer because we're going to finish First Thessalonians chapter 3. I promise this week we're going to finish it and then we're off to First Peter. Uh, and once we get into First Peter, we'll be in that. We'll probably be in First Peter the rest of the year. And then we'll be in Second Peter towards the second half of the year. But it's understanding what God's will is for your life, but you have to understand what you've been gifted in. We've all been gifted with at least one gift from the Holy Spirit. At least one. But are you using it? Do you know what it is? Some people don't know what it is. I, I, I had a conversation with my son. My son can teach the Word of God way better than Dad. 21 years old. And I'm like, dude, your gift is sitting in the back of the shed somewhere collecting rust. What are you doing? Because he's, he's trying to figure out, like, Dad, what am I supposed to do next? And I'm like, what is God's will for your life? You need to start praying for that. But I can tell you one thing. The gift that you've been given is not being exercised. You need to, you need to start using He's a natural leader natural leader and and very mature for his age but he needs to he needs to get off the the can and get moving you know god I, man i would love i didn't come to faith till i was 39 i would have loved to have it at 21 i mean my son's been since five years old and 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 part of it is he's single he's pure you know he keeps he doesn't practice sexual morality and so there's a purity to his teaching. He's not been marred by the world. I got 39 years of the world. And, and so are you exercising that gift, though? All of you got one. You may be an encourager, right? You have the gift of encouragement. Are you encouraging people? We need, uh, man, everybody needs encouragement. We all do. We all do. We all need somebody to come up behind us and tell, hey, man, you could do this now. Get going. <laughs> we need that, right? The other thing is, is we need to know uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit our direction. I believe that, that when you're connected to the power of the Holy Spirit, God will show you uh, the direction that you're supposed to go. And that's through prayer. That's through being in the Word. It's just those basic things that I know that people get tired of, like, what is the will of God? Why are you telling me I need to be in the Word of God? Why are you telling me I need to be in prayer? Those may seem basic to you, and you're like, that's all the pastor ever tells me. Well, that's because that's, what, that's how you know the will of God. You're hearing from God when you open His Word. And we'll get to that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. I love what... It says there, because it says, For thanks we can render to God for your return, in your return, 
for all joy with which we rejoice before our God on your account as we night and day keep praying most earnestly that we may see your face and may complete what is lacking in your faith. They are, you know, praying, and that was something that Paul did. He was a man of prayer, and, and, and he was constantly seeking the spirit and the will of God, like what is the direction? He would get, you can't go there. Why? The Holy Spirit said, I can't go there. I got to go here. You, you only know that when you're connected to the power of the Holy Spirit. And we used that analogy with y'all before where, you know, the missionary, uh, Lloyd Pulley, he wrote that book um, under his influence. I always say it wrong. <laughs> but it's being connected to the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and one of the things he talked about, he said there was a missionary overseas in Europe that had a car. And it was most of the kids wouldn't even know what it is, a stick shift. And so it, he would have to jump it. The guy would tell him, hey, make sure you're always going downhill so that way when you have to start the car because there's something wrong and we can't figure it out, but you're, you're going to have to jump the car through throwing the clutch. And so the guy did it for two years. New guy comes in to take over the, for the missionary for that area, and he tells him the same thing. Make sure you park it downhill. And the guy's like, Why? He's a mechanic. He, he was like, let me just pop the hood. And what it was is those connectors to the alternator were not connected. Fa it, it, that He wasn't connected. And that's our life. That's a picture of our life when we're not connected to the power of the Holy Spirit. Like you can't be the husband or the father or the wife or the mother or the grandmother, the godly grandmother that we all or godly grandfather that we're wanting to be. If you're not connected to the power of the Holy Spirit, you cannot walk this life without it. That's God's will for your life is like Jesus died on the cross for you and you were paid for by the blood of Christ. A very like we don't think about that enough. You're his children and he's like sealed you with the Holy Spirit. Be connected to it. But again, if we're biblically illiterate, we don't spend time in God's word. We don't spend time in prayer. How are you going to be connected to it? How are you going to know his will? You're flying at the seat of your pants, making decisions off your emotions and feelings. And we got to be careful with that because that feelings is the F word in the church. Don't do that. Don't make decisions, especially men. Don't make decisions off your emotions and feelings. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us or find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio. Pretty much wherever you can find a podcast, uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 